and here again, for nearly 2,000 years, until the coming of Jesus Christ, God allowed the world system, the world religions, the world beliefs, he allowed them to flourish. And he tolerate their flourishing today, but not with impunity. There's a passage of scripture in Acts chapter 17, verses 30 and 31, that divides the world, that divides time into two spheres. There's a time before the incarnation, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and then there's a time afterwards, and it is divided. And you can't take, you can't take the old into the new. Even though the new is the foundation for the old. But you can't take the old into the new. There, there's, a, there's a new set of standards in effect on this second day of May 2011 that was not in effect in A.D., uh, uh, B.C. 30, 40, 60, 90, B.C. 10, B.C. 1100, 1500. Wasn't in effect. Only been in effect 2,000 years. I don't care how old you think the earth is. So, God allowed the world except Israel. Israel has never been allowed to practice the world system. Never been allowed to practice the world system. To it, Israel has had to believe what God wanted them to believe. What God said that they must believe. Up until the time that Jesus was raised from the dead. Let me say that again. From the birth of Israel under Moses coming out of Egypt. Israel was not allowed to believe as the world believed. Up until the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's when the world was divided into two spheres before his death and after his death. And after his death, Israel picked up some of the same requirements that the New Testament church has. They don't want to believe it. But after the death of Jesus Christ, Israel picked up some of the same requirements that the New Testament church has. And to make sure that they would pick up those requirements or consider those requirements, God had the temple destroyed in A.D. 70. There hasn't been a high priest, there hasn't been a sacrifice, there hasn't been a worship in Israel since A.D. 70. I went there in 2009 looking for the temple, looking for the Holy of Holies. I searched all over Jerusalem and couldn't find it. Because according to God's plan, it wasn't there. And he didn't intend for it to be there. And it won't be there until he gets ready to put it back there. Now, because Israel has picked up some of the same requirements that the church has. Ask the Jews for Jesus of the chosen few. Now, and since the world refuses to accept Jesus, consequently, they can't know God. I mentioned earlier that 
there was there's a there's a time when the the the, the, the world is, is divided into two time periods before before the death of Jesus and after the death of Jesus. And and let me tell you why that's important. I'm going to turn to first uh, I'm going to turn to Acts chapter 17 verses 30 31. I'm only going to read two chapters. If you read the 17th chapter of Acts, uh, the first 20 verses pertain to Israel and the rest of it pertain to the Gentiles or the church. Uh, what did I say? Acts chapter 17 verses uh, verse, uh, 30 to 31. Here's the dividing of time between the Old and the New Testament. And the time of this ignorance. And the time of this ignorance is when God allowed all the nations of the world other than Israel to go their own way. To do what was pleasing in their own sight, in their own eyes have their own system, have their own worship. And the time of this ignorance, and we're talking about before the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. God winked at, overlooked. But now, but now, since he got up from the grave, but now, Easter Sunday, uh, the first day of the week of the seven days of unleavened bread. So there's no difference between Easter and the seventh day or the Passover. Absolutely none. I went to a setter a couple of weeks ago. I heard it. Then I came back and researched it. Absolutely no difference between Easter or between Sunday and the Sabbath. Absolutely no difference between Sunday worship and Sabbath worship. Because the Apostle Paul says, it's no sin if you worship on Saturday. It's no sin if you don't. Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh-day Baptist, make a difference. Now, so, Acts chapter 17, verse 30. At that time of this ignorance, that is when God allowed all the world's system to flourish as they pleased, but now commandeth, all men everywhere to have a change of mind. To have a change of mind consequent uh, as the result of the knowledge that came through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He passed it on to the apostles. He sent the Holy Spirit and for the last 2,000 years the Holy Spirit of God has been regulating uh, and leading and guiding the church on earth. Uh huh. The good, the bad, and the ugly that's in the church. He has been he has been he has been regulating it. Asked um, asked Peter, the apostle Peter, and um, two Peter two nine. Now thanks some. Um, 1 Thessalonians somewhere around 2 tells you that God is regulating. Is regulating. There's a boundary beyond which man cannot exceed. Only reason why you can fly 50,000 uh, 50, feet up in the air is you have to take some earth, you have to take some air with you. But in the spirit realm, there are some areas beyond which man cannot, God will not allow man to, to traverse. Now, 
And the time of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent, have a change of mind. And that change of mind is have a change of mind about Jesus, about who they think or who you think he is. That's the only commandment that God has given to the world. All the rest of these, these commandments are to the church. Because until you obey that one, your destiny will settle before the foundation of the world. The only command that God has given to the world system outside of Christianity and Israel, the only command that God has given that's in effect on this second day of May in 2011 is to have a change of mind about Jesus. Now, once you have that change of mind, you pick up a multitude of commands that you're expected to obey. And the time of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. Uh, on camera number one is the judgment of the world for sin. It happened once and it will not happen again during this church age. But Jesus died on the cross because God judged the world in sin and laid all the sins of the world from all time, all ages upon him, made him to be sin who knew no sin. He was sinless. But God made him to be sin and then crucified him, buried him, stayed buried for three days and then got up on the third day. Well, when we got there on the third day, when the women got there on the third day, the tomb was empty. He probably got up sometime between Friday evening and, uh, and Sunday morning because he had some other errand, errands to run or to do for God. He had completed the one that he came to earth to do. So, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained to judge the world. Jesus of Nazareth, the Christ. He has given assurance. And we who are Christian, we know that Jesus is the judge of heaven and earth. Jesus of Nazareth. He has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. And the, the Bible tells us that God selected certain people to witness the resurrection of Jesus Christ and they wrote about it. On the testimony of one or two witnesses, in a court of law, you can send a, send a person to jail for life or take his life. And here, this gives eternal life and, 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 and people don't want to believe the witness or the witnesses that God has put in here. Sad time. So that's, that, that's what we're saying. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna move on. Now, I said that we were going to reflect on Jesus, and we have been reflecting on Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and ascending of, of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to continue with this reflection on Jesus. And uh, in, in, in looking, in reflecting on Jesus from the top down, we would have to ask the question, what did Jesus come into the world or to the, into the earth realm to do? It, 
if he's been here and gone, what did he come to do? 